Every government has its Secret Service branch. America, it's CIA. France, Desiem Bureau. England, MI5. A messy job? Well, that's when they usually call on me or someone like me. Oh, yes. My name is Drake. John Drake. Can I see your ticket, sir? Oh, um, haven't you got it? I've just come on duty, sir. Uh, where are you going, sir? I don't know. You don't know where you're going, sir? Afraid not. I see. Well, what name, sir? John Drake. Hmm? John Drake, yes. Yes, John Drake. That's me. Where am I going? Fort William, sir. 14D. There's the next one along, sir. Right. Is there a Mr. Clements on the train? A Mr. Clements, sir? Yeah. Um, you know, sir. You sure? Yes, sir. We're moving, sir. Oh, I see. Thank you. Uh, by the way, what time do we get to Fort William? Nine o'clock in the morning, Jay. Why, hello, Mr. Clements. And how are you? Pleasant flight? Yes. Yeah. Why did you want me across the Atlantic in such a hurry, Mr. Clements? The most intriguing thing. You'll be fascinated. Oh, go ahead and fascinate me. Well, there's this character from Aberdeen, traveling around the highlands, selling agricultural implements. Oh, a salesman's story. You tell me when to laugh, won't you? I will. Two days ago, he had his car stolen. Yes, we called Scotland Yard, Whitehall, 1212. We did. We found the car, and the thief, and accounted for all the fingerprints. Oh, I think the police are wonderful. So do I. Because they also found, inside the car, Fingerprints of a man who's been dead for the past ten years. The man is Hans Brechter. Yeah. I thought his body had been identified. It seems somebody slipped up. Hans Brechter, master spy, killed in an air crash 1950. Now he turns up in the north of Scotland. Very odd. Why, uh, why did you want me particularly, Mr. Clements? Because you're the only person I could find on your end. Didn't know him. What? I watched him. I observed him for several days. It was in Berlin. When I was sure that it was Brechter, I closed the net tight and pounced. I didn't know you'd ever caught him. Uh, no, I didn't. The net was empty. He's a smart man. What's he doing in the north of Scotland? That's what we want you to find out. But don't disturb him until you're quite sure what's going on. Wouldn't do for him to slip your net a second time. Uh, no, because he may have changed a bit in ten years of him to have disappeared completely. He must have done. I wonder if he's still got a beard. He used to have. I may not know him. Oh, come now. What on earth can he be up to? Well, there's our naval base at Scarpet Flow, airfields at Wick and Stornoway. Then there are those innocent little fishing boats. Just outside our three-mile limit. They could be running a secret courier service. That ought to give you a start. Well, good night, Drake. I'm leaving it out. There's an Inspector Mackenzie meeting you at Fort William. Have a good time. Thank you. Inspector had nothing to do with the theft of the car. Oh, yes, Mr. Drake. We got the man who stole the Kaiser. It's a sneak thief. He said he was alone and the owner bears that out. Oh, Craig. Did you ask him about the fingerprints? No, Mr. Clement said I should leave that to you. Ah, uh, here he is. Oh, you better question him. We don't want him to think that anything unusual has happened. Ah, good afternoon, Mr. Craig. Good afternoon, Inspector. Hello there, Duncan. Enjoying yourself? Yes, thank you, Mr. Craig. Uh, Mr. Drake, uh, Mr. Craig. Duncan Craig. 
How do you do, Mr. Drake? Lord Duncan. Mr. Drake's an American friend of mine. He's having a holiday out here. Well, he couldn't have chosen a better place. You're right there. Can I get you a drink, Mr. Craig? Uh, no, no. This is my busy day, and I can't stay long. All my clients are in town. Well, you can sit down for a moment. It's about your car, Mr. Oh. Craig. We found a set of fingerprints that can't be accounted for. You can't remember anybody else that might have been in your car. Well, not offhand, but does it matter? You've caught the thief. Oh, it does, in a way. You see, the man we've arrested isn't admitting he stole the car. Uh, so with a set of fingerprints not accounted for, he might cook up some sort of defense. But I saw him take it. Aye, at a distance. You can't remember anyone else, eh? A stranger, maybe. Somebody you've picked up. No. But, Dad... That man you dropped off on the score returning. Oh, that's right. Clever lad, so there was. Uh, when was this? Oh, about a week ago, a local. Where did you pick him up? In Castletown. He'd been shopping and missed the bus. Where did he sit? In the front, next to me. I was in the middle. Did you notice if he touched the panel? He was leaning on it, just above the glove box. What did he look like? Only. Fair or dark? He was sort of grey. <laughs> uh, Mr. Craig, did you notice anything else about him? No, but then, you see, I was driving. <laughs> there was nothing remarkable about him. Uh, was he clean-shaven? Yes, yes. Mm. Uh, McBride! Uh, is there anything else? Uh, not just now. Oh, well, excuse me, will you? Thank you very much, and have a good time, Mr. Drake. Bye, Mr. Drake. McBride, I want to talk to you about your tractor. It's time you... Uh, where were his prints? Where the boy said? We know where Brector was a week ago. And where he is today. How's that? And the sky is a wee village down on the headland. It's the end of the world. He'd been shopping. He wouldn't be going there if he didn't live there. Unless he was going to meet a boat at night on one of the beaches. That's oh, possible. Well, how do you believe that something of the sort is going on? I work on the, the supposition that he's living there. But there are no installations in that area. Nothing to interest him. Well, he could be running the courier service, getting agents in and out. That's true. I'll move in and see if I can find him. At the end of a headland, you say, well, I could hardly be uh, driving casually through in a car. Can you arrange to drop me on the, the shore on the boat? No trouble at all. I'm obliged. <laughs> What are you curious about? Well, best of all, who is that homicidal maniac? Oh, him? <laughs> that is Seamus McGregor. Why was he shooting at you? He was not shooting at he me. He was shooting at you. Oh, you could say it is his affair. Oh, I see. Because you're a poacher. I'm no such thing. And the man that was chasing you? He was the gamekeeper. Chasing me? I have not been out the whole evening. And you are in no position to deny that. Why am I in no position to deny it? Because you came from the sea. I saw them putting you ashore. And why shouldn't they come from the sea? That's your affair. It's no business of mine, just as my poaching is no business of yours. Have you seen them put other men ashore at night? I did not answer you that. Why not? I'm not one to talk. Young Willie Foss talked to what he saw nights. He's dead now. They found him at the bottom of the cliff. Accidental death, they called it. Be that as it may, I'll hold my tongue and I'll thank others to do the same. All right. It's a deal. Was 
one of these men right here in the bar, Brechter, how much had he changed? Good evening. I'm on a kind of a walking holiday. He enjoy walking. Oh, I find it interesting, relaxing. Oh, you do. <laughs> then you can't have done much of it. <laughs> Gentlemen, please. Oh, good evening, Miss Jeannie. There's a, uh, there's somebody wants a drink. Oh, had away with you, Jock. You know it's nine o'clock. Oh, it's not for me. Uh, oh, good evening. But uh, I'm afraid it's nine o'clock. Oh, is that bad? Well, we can't sell drinks after nine. That's the law. I see. I've, uh, I've come rather a long way. Good night, Jock. Good night, sir. What'll it be? Um, whiskey. Oh, um, Jock. Could you let me have a lot for tomorrow? Oh, anything for you, Miss Jeannie. But we'll not be back till late. Neither was the fingerprint I was looking for. And then, in the same place, at the bottom of each glass, I saw them. The prints were Hans Brechter's. Yeah. We'll be leaving in a minute or two. It goes into Castletown. We'll go to a hotel there. Uh, were you wanting to spend the night here? No, he's taking the last bus, Jean. Uh, have you got a room? If you want one. You'll be more comfortable in Castletown. As a matter of fact, I'm uh, rather tired. I'd prefer to stay if it's possible. Oh, well, you must be hungry, Mr. Um... Drake. Hmm, well, I'll just go and get you some supper. I'll buy you a drink, Mr. Lang. I have one. You come from America? That's right. I don't see many Americans here. You're not from Scotland yourself, are you, Mr. Lang? Danish. From the Faroe Islands, way up in the north. What brings you to Scotland, Mr. Drake? I'm on a kind of a holiday. What sort of a holiday is a kind of a holiday? Well, I, uh, I walk around, travel around, then I uh, write about my travels. That's how you make your living. Oh. Clever man. What, to be able to write? No, to go where you please, to be free. Think for yourself. That's what I should have done when I was young. If you don't think for yourself, you get filled with prejudice, hatred, and lies. I'll show you to your room, Mr. Drake. All right, thanks. I'll uh, see you later. On me. Oh, mind your head, Mr. Drake. Thank you. Oh, yes, this will be fine. Right. Well, I'll just turn your bed back for you. How did you find your way here? I uh, was just uh, making my way north, walking along the cliff. Oh, so you just came by chance? Yes, I suppose you'd call it that. Mm -hmm. Must be even wilder here than in the Faroe Islands. That's where my father came from. I've never been to the Faroes myself. You live here all your life? No, I was born in Spain. My mother was Spanish. Really? I'd never have guessed you weren't a native Highlander. You're about as, uh, as Spanish as Robbie Burns. Mm -hmm. Well, my mother brought me to Scotland when I was only a baby. And you and your father live here alone now? Yes. My mother was killed in an air raid during the war in Glasgow. Well, you come right down, Mr. Drake. Your supper will be ready. On my way. Mm. 
No, we don't have much excitement here, but who wants excitement anyway? We've shut ourselves off from the rest of the world. You have television. I bought it for Jean. Oh, Father watches it more than I do. I think he likes the comedy shows. It's good to make people laugh. Some clowns show more wisdom than all these dictators that try to control the world. Father hates politics. He won't even have a newspaper in the house anymore. Really, is that so? This is our world. The moors and the sky and the sea. Well, Father, I'm off to bed now. Good night. Don't forget to lock up. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good, huh? Yes. Very good. And now, Hans Spector. We can have a little chat. Spector? I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. Who are you? They told me to contact you. Who? Who do you think? They said you'd have instructions for me. I know nothing about it. They said as soon as I landed to get in touch with Hans Brechter. The code name is Ivor. I don't know anything about you. I live here you alone. You are Brechter, aren't you? I was Brechter. All right, you found me. I don't even care anymore. I suppose I always knew I would be in the end. I, I never expected them to go on believing it was my body they found. Doesn't matter now. What matters is this. You can tell your people I'm through. I don't care what they do to me. I'm finished with a lot of them. You've gone over to the British, eh? I haven't gone over to anyone. The British don't even know I'm Brechter. I'm not on anybody's side. I just come to my senses, that's all. After 40 years, I realized the waste and the lies and the uselessness of everything I'd done in my life. Trying to change the world, working for the glorious revolution. There have been 20 revolutions in the last 40 years, and every one of them has left our children a little less to live for. Fine performance. Very convincing. Maybe it fools your daughter as well. My daughter believes what I tell her about myself. Yes, but you don't have to pretend to me. I'm not pretending. I'm telling the truth. If you don't believe that Ivor sent me, there are ways of checking you. I know nothing about Ivor. Look, we both work for the same people, Brett. How else do you think I found you? I'm not working for anyone. You refuse to give me instructions? I have no instructions to give. Only perhaps some advice. Stop wasting your life on conspiracy and bitterness. Do as I have. Get away from it. This way you may find some peace. All right. Someone appears to have slipped up. Someone was asking questions, and about me, somewhere in the village. And they were asking if I'd been landed that day. Who were they talking to? Well, some of those neutral trawlers out at sea didn't waste all their time fishing. I suppose if I were sensible, I would kill you. But I can't. I've seen too much of it, and I've, I've lost the gift for hatred that makes killing possible. Tell your employers I'm not afraid of them, that there's nothing they could do to me that would ever persuade me to work for them again. And now you can get out of my house. Father, what on earth is going on? Nothing, nothing you need worry about. Mr. Drake's leaving. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Father. He can't leave at this hour. What's he supposed to have done anyway? He said things that I cannot forgive. Oh, well, never mind that now. Come along. Mr. Drake will go first thing in the morning. I will not... Now, Father, will you go to bed? leave until we contact you sometime tomorrow. Oh, morning. Good morning. I brought you breakfast up here. I thought it would be better. Well, it was very kind of you. Did you sleep well? Very well. Oh, 
Uh, I found this when I went down for the guest. Well, you're the only guest. It must be for you. Oh, thank you. Why did you quarrel with my father last night? I'm very sorry about that. Yes, I'm sorry too. I'm waiting on top of Glen Bay. Come immediately, Ivor. Was that where Willie Foss went over? Young Willie, who talked too much? Mr. Drake, what are you doing up here? What are you doing up here, Mr. Craig? Or should I say Ivor? No, not Ivor. Stuart, after my father. Stuart Craig. Can I give you a lift? brought him back here for. It's very thoughtful of you, Miss Lang, to give me breakfast before you sent me out to be killed. But I wasn't the first. There was Willie Foss, wasn't there? What are you saying, Drake? I'm sorry for you, Lang. You see, I believe you. I believe that you managed to break away, but unfortunately your daughter is carrying on in your footsteps. I don't believe you. Perhaps you'd like to take a look in our room. I think you'll find a transmitting set there. Yes. When they found out you were still alive, I made a bargain with them. That's why they left you in peace. You betrayed them. I didn't. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 